My husband is blind and this is how he wrote and illustrated his very first children's book. Paul, how did you do this? Come on. <laughs> how in the world does a blind person write? Mr. Maple did it for me. Illustrate it. Well, he's more than just a trained guide dog. He's I mean, a trained artist. Look at this. <laughs> All right, I will tell you, I will give away all of my secrets, but first I need a coffee. <laughs> so how wow, that like drawer is coffee? a disaster. A, don't show Look it. Look at that disaster. Don't show it. How does a blind guy make a is coffee? Is that a decaf pod? Oh God, it better not be. Uh, no, it's good. You're good. <laughs> Woo! Okay. That would be, I mean, like, listen, I don't mind being blind but not caffeinated? First of all, before we dive in to how I wrote and illustrated, more importantly, how I illustrated this children's book, I think that to refresh our viewers' memories, I think that we need a visual demonstration of what I can see because okay. so as everybody watching this should know, blindness is a spectrum. Blindness does not mean zero vision. Okay, so don't move. Okay. And we'll show Paul vision. Paul vision. Okay. That's how much you can see right like now. like the sound effect? That was a beautiful sound effect. So uh, we see black, but I think we should introduce the static so that everybody knows kind of like what the static is like too. Yep. Oh yeah, we've got dimming, blurring, dimming. tunnel, vision, and static. Right, because of course my acuity is poor, even with contact lenses, which I do wear. Uh, so blurring, dimming, static, tunnel. It's a four piece puzzle. Okay, beautiful. They've got it. They've seen it. Now we want to know with that, <laughs> Atrocious vision. How yeah. did you rate? Okay, sorry. I have to get up. I am doing crunches trying <laughs> what to. Are you doing? I've, been, I've been sitting on the counter doing crunches trying to keep the camera still. Matthew was doing so, this. Yes. Uh, yeah, with my head up between those lights. Yeah, right there. <laughs> you got your coffee? I got my Can coffee. Can we get this show going? We're getting the show going. We're getting the show going. But I need a creamer now. Why are you wearing your shoes in the house? And they do not match that outfit. <laughs> the blue with the green shirt. Mm -mm. I thought they were both blue. Nope. That's okay, a well, forest green shirt. This is a really good point that I'm making right now. There's actually three or four different types of color blindness, and I have the one where I can't distinguish greens and blues. Yeah. I cannot dis distinguish like browns and purples. Okay. Oftentimes green and gray are the same to me. Wow. Uh, also, pink, orange, red. <laughs> All of those may as well be the same color. So I can tell the difference between a warm color and a cool color. So do you think everything's kind of gray, essentially? No, so that was my thought. When I was a kid, I thought color blindness meant you saw the world in black and white. And it isn't the case, it just means- So you just see- So I can see this is a very colorful page. Okay. But I don't know what this is up here, if it is green or blue. Like to me, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, it is definitely blue. And then I'm like, it's definitely like green and down here I'm like I don't know if that's orange pink or I know it's not red but it could be like light red but isn't that what pink is <laughs> <laughs> okay you still haven't answered our question how did you do it come come sit down okay come it's sit down time. ah yes look at these oh I'm over here oh <laughs> <laughs> don't move on me okay see how they stand up perfectly now because they didn't before. It <laughs> that one's, why is that one not standing up? Oh no, is this one of the old ones that flopped over? No, it's because you're putting them upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> he was on his head. So these are the, the new and improved plushies based on the book. So the book is called The Pengrooms. Yep. And it is based on our wedding invitations back on March 25th, 2019, Matthew. What did you do? I proposed to you. Yes. And then we had to start planning our wedding because the yeah. next thing everybody wanted to know is when we were getting married. So we, yes. had to, we picked a date, mm -hmm. December 15th, and we sent out our wedding invitations. Mabel is, Mabel. Mabel is very interested in this story because he, he was not there for this part. I know, Mabel. This is, this is your origin story. This is how your daddy's met <laughs> and married and had you. <laughs> Okay, continue. So then we had to create wedding invitations and I wanted our photo on the wedding invitations and you said absolutely not, I'm tired of our pictures. Paul, you are an artist, you should just draw a picture of us, so I did. But of course I thought we'd be far cuter as a couple of penguins because penguins are already in tuxedos, okay. formally dressed, ready for marriage. Yep. And then I threw on the rainbow bow ties and I called them the penguins. Oh yeah, and there's the wedding invitation right there, see? There's the little- Wait, 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 hold it still. Coming in, coming in. This is, Who's, who's that? 
Uh, that's me. Yep, that's you, and that's me because I'm a little bit shorter, yeah. and you have yeah. the little cute little quaff, and I have the little. My hair always sticks up in the back, so I had to include that. Okay. I sent you this photo, and you said maple, wow. maple, my foot. No, 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 don't need it. Like, okay, continue. Sorry. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say when you saw this picture? I said, D why did you make me so? Rotund. Exactly. And could you put abs on them? So I did. I sent a photo with abs and that is, I still have that picture on my phone. We should share it sometime. So anyway, the Pengrooms were born on that day. I called them the Pengrooms. Like I thought it was a cute name. It really stuck. And then I immediately started drawing pictures of them in different situations at Christmas, on our honeymoon, uh, going through the early days of the pandemic together. Like what would the Pengrooms be doing? And then that is when you said to me, I'll never forget this because we were waiting in a drive through line uh, for Starbucks <laughs> during the pandemic because you couldn't go into the stores. No. So it was a long line on this sunny April day and we were waiting to get our coffees and you said, Paul, the Pengrooms have a story to tell. It's been my dream my whole life to write and illustrate a children's book. Yeah. And you said this needs to be the story. In fact, do you want to see my first children's book? Okay. Coming. This has been a dream. Oh my God, Matthew, this plant is too big. We are, okay. <laughs> Matthew, I'm over here. <laughs> I can't see you. Your shirt matches the color of the leaves. <gasps> Maple's very excited. Maple's He's like, excited. Oh, oh, you're playing games. Where is it? Yeah, Maple, where is it? Oh, is this it here? No. Is not. that it? Oh, is this it? I'm doing this all by feel. You could really help me, you know. Do you want me to help? Yeah. Here it is. Oh, you found it. I think. Okay, here's your first children's book. My first children's book that I ever wrote and illustrated mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> My first children's book. I was six years old yep. when I wrote and illustrated this book. Yes. Obviously, I did not write and illustrate G.I. Joe's in outer space. I hope not. But I knew and I felt very strongly about this at the age of six. My book needed a hard cover. So I found this book on my brother's shelf and I decided that he had not read it in a little while, so I stole it. And then I ripped out all the pages and I put in that is my sacrilege. own story. Well, it's about a little turtle. Wait, 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 we've got to see this. Um, oh, okay, yep, yep, now it's focused. Okay, so this is a little story called The Sad Turtle. Yeah. And I wrote Beautiful. and illustrated this entire story. All Did you only have green, yellow, and brown crayons? It's very possible. Uh, <laughs> I think I <laughs> Matthew, we've been over this. I'm colorblind, okay? <laughs> I want to impress upon our audience that I didn't do this for a school assignment. I didn't tell my mom I wanted to do it. I literally just on my own accord created this book. And when my parents found it, of course, they were like super excited. They put it away in a box and that is why today I still have it. It's a treasured item. What did your brother, was your brother excited too? <laughs> well, he was maybe a little disappointed with my choice to desecrate his G.I. Joe book, but hey, you know. Had he, had he moved on from G.I. Joe? Feel, I feel like he had totally moved on. But you know how older brothers, they'll decide they're angry anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was my first book, so yep. this is actually my second hardcover book. <laughs> the Pengrooms. First official one. Okay, Matthew, why don't we head over to my studio so you and I are going to show how we did this together. Let's get our shoes on and let's go. Matthew, I already have my shoes on. I was and fully prepared. Let's change those shoes and go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Who's here? Maple. <laughs> Welcome to Paul Castle's studio. So right here wow. is where all of the magic happens. And by that, I just mean all of the shipping. So I wanted to show you the old plushies. Okay. To, to further demonstrate. Yeah. Right? Oh. See? Yes. This is the original plushie design. Matthew, you are responsible for making that change. And Notice another change. It's the size of the eyes. They're a little bit bigger, just a little bit bigger so in the new So they look design. a little cuter. Yeah. Oh, and here is a little Pringle and Finn pin that we Pull created. That out. Oh, that's super cute. And I wanted to tell you where the names Pringle and Finn came from because that yeah. is a frequently asked question. So when I designed the first penguin, the name Pringle just popped into my head because I thought Pringle the penguin sounded so cute together. So it was just yeah. one of those moments. But when we created the book and I had to come up with a name for the other penguin, 
I must have gone through like what a dozen names, right, Matthew? Uh -huh. I mean, we were always oh, like good. You did change your shoes. <laughs> we were always trying to come up with names together, like Pringle and Pip. <laughs> was one of them. And I remember the day we were walking through our neighborhood yes. and we passed this pet store and it was closed d due to the pandemic. And on the window, they had all of these little paw prints and in each paw print was the name of a pet, different dogs and cats who routinely came to this particular store. And so we stood there and we were reading all the names off together and we were matching it with Pringle. And yeah. so we were like, Pringle and Muffin, <laughs> Pringle and Bosco. And we landed on Finn and we both said Pringle and Finn. And it was just like, that's the name. So was, that's how we came it up. It was the perfect name. Okay, so why are we here in your studio? All right, so I'm gonna take you through a single spread from my book. I'm gonna just basically demonstrate the creative process and how I was able to do it. Okay, so here's my little favorite yellow chair. Mm -hmm. Gotta have a good and comfy spot <laughs> Got it. Where are you going? Right over here. <laughs> I illustrated the entire book on my iPad. Okay. And here's my little pencil. It's focusing. Come on, focus. Yes, there it is. Paul Castle. So cute. Look at that. And you got me this cool, I don't even know what this thing is that holds it, but... It's a tablet holder mm -hmm. for artists. So it turns your little tablet into like a little mobile desk. It's wonderful. It's actually very, very handy. The reason I used a, an iPad as opposed to traditional media for me is very simple because about 10 years ago, I lost the ability to draw on paper due to the faintness of pencil lines and just the the, the noise I get in my eyes and then the loss of visual acuity just made it too difficult. So the iPad does two very cool things. One is it can illuminate, it brightens from within. So I turn the brightness up to its max. The second thing I can do is zoom in and out to create finer detail and then shrink things down into my tunnel vision. So my process is constantly shrinking and zooming and shrinking and zooming. Sounds like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> That's a great reference. I wear the hat because this hat blocks glare from getting into my enlarged pupils. It's one of the symptoms of retinitis pigmentosa. So the hat is just that little simple tool to help me uh, see through that pinhole a little bit better. Here's the whole book all laid out. All right, Matthew, so this was the first thing I did. Select my tool. I have something called a fat pencil. You see how nice and like thick these lines are? This idea came to me about Pringle and Finn on a cute little motor car, just like that pin that we showed you. And I, I had this, this is one of the first images I kind of saw in my head, was this idea for them to be with the goggles and these like, these hats, you know, that people used to wear on motorbikes. And of course, I just imagined these fall leaves coming down. And so this is called a thumbnail sketch where okay. you kind of just randomly do so that. So this is step one. This sketch. would be step one. I would take that idea and do a rough version of it. Now I know this looks really detailed, but as you can see, like right here, there's lots of like loose lines right. around it's still everything. It's a sketch, but yeah. it is more refined. It is more refined. Step three would be dropping the opacity of that layer. And then I create a new layer and I have my tool. I shrink it down because I want a nice fine line. Let's take this scarf. I would follow this line, okay? And I'm now tracing my own drawing. Let's see? Okay. And I carefully am going to do this. So now you're creating your final lines. This is what you call your clean line layer. Okay. What does that look like when it's done? So you see how much fun that is? <laughs> and I'm going in and out and in and out. So what does that look like when it's done? This. Yeah, so what, uh, well, what you we can don't see, see is, we don't see I, I want you to see it because I want oh, you to see that want us to see I moved, made changes. I made changes as I went. I changed where their eyes were. I okay. made little adjustments along the way. Okay, the, now hide the sketchy layer. The rough layer. And now we just have, it's like a coloring book. The next thing is filling it with color. So I create a layer under that layer. Matthew, I select my brush. I'm gonna zoom in on that scarf. I can play with the size, you see that? And I just fill it in. I just start filling it in. 
just like this. You know, while I do this process, I darken areas that I know are gonna already be darker and then leave other areas lighter. Okay, so you're already beginning uh, the highlight and shadows. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, getting that first little bit down for myself. What does this look like when it's done? <laughs> it will look like this. Ooh, pretty. See all the color? Yep, love it. Next, on top of the color layer is my texture layer. I'm gonna go back to the pencil. I go over everything with the exact same color, but now I want texture and line to be running through everything. So I will literally start to do this. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Over everything, because I don't like a solid color look. You really want everything to look like it's been touched by your pencil, because it's, it's a very hand done look overall. And I like to run my pencil through every little piece of oh, the that art. That is time consuming. But it adds this element of detail and I can go in. Maybe I want to do like a little bit of a crosshatch just to give this. How are you undoing things? Oh yeah, so if I make a mistake, I just tap with two fingers really quick. You see? And that can undo a ah, mistake. That is handy. <laughs> what does this look like when it's all done? Look like that. Zoom in for us. See Ooh, how everything, so much texture. You see all the texture and everything. Love that. And then I want you to see kind of like the difference. So that's without. And then no, when I finish, huge difference. When I finish, this is what it looks. That's okay. how it looks. But you still got more layers to show us. And I'll add a shadow layer, which actually deepens ah, things even more. Okay. That's with yep, the brush. Love that. A highlight layer. Yeah. Which adds a little pop of white and you can see on and off Ooh, now just okay. as i've chosen this side to be where the shadows are mm -hmm. obviously the light then is coming from the upper right and okay. i often choose the upper right for light and this then so many steps so many layers now that's a finished spread there is one more important step matthew what i call you over to look at it yeah can i turn the camera on you okay matthew show us what you do let's go into this one. Always have to make sure I'm on my layer. Right, because you've made the mistake before. I have. So there might be like a leftover artifact here. So I'd be like, I'd circle little dots or things that were left over. And then let's say maybe um, this bird, I might do an arrow and I'd say, move right. Uh -huh. Which means like, get him over more on the edge, more like he's looking down. Maybe we've talked about that. Because we also talk about this while I'm doing it. Yeah, I might say uh, rounder. Right, round, yeah. Because we worked really hard on getting the penguins to look like the same characters from page to page, which can be really yeah. challenging. Okay, so then you would do this and then I'll I would this. go back to work, make all the changes. Then I'm done. You make all those changes, voila. Okay, why don't you pull up the motorcycle picture, drop it to your computer, and we can show kind of the next step with a completed spread. Okay, Matthew. So the first thing we're gonna do is bring that spread in to InDesign. Pringle, Pringle and Finn. Mm -hmm made a great team, period. Okay, and then obviously you have left space for that. Do right you know where the gutter is there. in this image? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got the lines for the gutters. Okay. And the safe lines. And then we're gonna bring that in. I think that looks good. Let's view it in overprint. Yeah, that looks nice. And there we have it. There is that page done. Are there any other steps? Well, I have already processed this image in Photoshop, CMYK. I've already done that for all the other spreads. Oh yeah. And that. already brought in all your text because you dropped me the written portion of the book. Right. And then I bring that in line by line into each page and replace it exactly where you want it. And there's the dedication page. Yep. And there we have the entire book, all the way to the final page where the penguins finally get to chill. Okay, so that is how Matthew and I were able to write, illustrate, and create our very first- Well, you wrote and illustrated, and then I did the layout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and our direction, our direction. Honestly- Critiques. It would, it would not have been as good a book if I were left to do this alone, Matthew. It would yeah. be filled with little errors. It would look like G.I. Joe's <laughs> Look at, this is the difference. Me on my own, 
Me with Matthew. Or uh, me six years old, <laughs> me as an adult. <laughs> this book is currently available. It is 50 two pages and I hope that today we convinced you that you should get your own copy because you can. You can actually, I believe. And a plushie. You need a plushie as well. Where are those little guys? Right you there. can get two. Two plushies. Pringle and Finn. Pringle and Finn. And uh, you can actually, I believe Matthew, is it available like directly below this video? Like Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's under here. You can it's tap under. below. Well, on YouTube it is. And or you can just go to paulcastlestudio.com plus a whole bunch of other artwork and fun stuff. So yeah, yeah. Maple? They... Maple, what's so noisy? <laughs> oh, it's this green donut bone. <laughs> he loves that little thing. It took over a year to do. Well, yeah, you're blind. And I have been hard at work on the sequel. And the sequel, the sequel? is... Sequel? There is a second book in the series that is coming out. The Penguins Get Divorced. <laughs> Matthew, no. Do you want to know what happened? Yeah. Pringle and Finn become dads. Oh, that yes. is cute. <gasps> Maple wants to be a dad. No. He wants to be a dad. <laughs> he was trying to steal one. Oh, he wants it so bad. Don't, Maple, don't lick G.I. Joe. Maple, that is sacred. Okay. Paul. Yes. For the extended video. Yeah. I want you to read out loud to us. J. Joe's in space, Matthew, AKA, AKA the sad, sad turtle. I would love to, but you know, I can't. You, you can't read? I can't read. You illiterate? <laughs> the words are too faint on these what? pages. What? They're too faint? They're, let me see, let me see. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pale, like pencil? Is I can't pencil? even see the illustrations. I'll be really honest. I'm looking really? at the page and I don't even see anything. What? I mean, not in this light. I would have to hold my what camera. What do you mean, not in this light? I know. It's, it's probably <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it much. Um, oh, I, I think that's sad. You can't even see your little. Oh, I can like I can see it through a phone if I hold my camera phone to it at the right angle. So I can still enjoy it. Certainly. Okay, but the author reading has been canceled. No, <laughs> hold on. But the, we, there will be about... no sad turtle books read out loud to you today. <laughs> What about you? Could you read it? Uh, yeah. Okay, I take the book. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Ignore this cup. <laughs> the Sad Turtle. When's upon a time, there was a turtle. <laughs> a sad turtle. Thank you for that glorious reading. Thank you for writing a beautiful little book <laughs> about the sad turtle, the lame, the graph, and the pig. Do you think I'm gonna throw it? Maple, I'm gonna throw it. Oh! oh! Oh my god, what did you just do? Okay. Everything okay? Yeah, it's okay. If you wanna watch the extended video and listen to me and watch me read The Sad Turtle, you can watch that on YouTube right here, or you can go to Patreon and watch it right here if you'd rather be part of our Patreon family where you can get Thousands, not thousands, hundreds of bonus, <laughs> hundreds of bonus episodes, extended episodes, extended videos, that's all here. If you're anywhere else, just go to patreon.com forward slash Matthew and Paul.